Hello, everyone. Um, uh, as I was presented, um, I'm open source consultant from Microsoft, and I have been working with all that containers and Kubernetes space for a long time. And um, this presentation today, you know, if you want to follow what I'm doing, just follow my Twitter. Probably there's the easy ways to follow what I'm doing. And I want to keep in touch with, you know, all the Go developers as uh, Go is the main language for, for the Kubernetes ecosystem. And um, that's the way that uh, if we connect, I can help, you know, the Go developers to get involved with the open source community. Microsoft is, in, is sponsoring and is helping many, many projects on that space. And I'm happy to be that bridge between, you know, anyone that want to help and contribute with those projects. I'm happy to be this person and just please ping me anytime. I'm also have one uh, channel called Azureta, where we have a few videos here. And the whole idea is to get new speakers and do mentoring and sponsorship for new speakers. And if you want to help and collaborate any subject on technology related or cloud or Azure or development, uh, there are videos here in, in English and Portuguese. If you want to do videos in another language, just ping me and I'll be more help. And also, if you want to write blogs, you are more than welcome to, to join us as a new speaker on the community or even as a mentor, as we have a few, a few mentors here. That's not, uh, that's something for the community. And uh, we have like 15 speakers so far, and the number is growing. Okay, please join both this channel and uh, and and follow what we're we doing. Uh, the talk today is about you know CNCF, and um, let me open the page here. I don't have slides. Why I don't have slides? Because the main idea here is to onboard. This community, the you know the Go Lang developers on what's happening around the Kubernetes space, as Go is the main language for for Kubernetes. Then, um, if you if you guys go in, in on the CNCF website, I think that's the first thing you have to understand what CNCF. Okay, then CNCF is part of the Linux Foundation. Okay, it's a non-profit organization, part of the Linux Foundation, and was created exactly for cloud native technology. You know, I think over time, over 20, 30 years, technology you know, reinvent itself. And cloud native space is exactly like a, a new cycle happening in the last five years or, or so, a little bit more. And cloud native compute foundation is exactly covering that space. Okay, if you're following things like KubeCon, all those conferences, that's exactly what Cloud Native is, you know, is helping with. We had one KubeCon uh, two weeks ago, I think. And let me just open here to show that KubeCon from two weeks ago. But the, the main idea to come here is look at the projects. Okay, come here and see contribute. You can look what you can help. That's the first thing. And you can see all the projects that are graduated because the, a foundation is pretty much, you know, onboarding new projects, sandbox projects, you know, new ideas to sponsor those projects. Okay. Um, I want to be a maintainer. You can go here. I wanted to be a contributor. You can go here. And that's how you start to understand what kind of project I can help. Okay, we're not going to be able to talk even, you know, close to these things. We're going to talk a little bit about Kubernetes and all the projects around the Kubernetes space, but Cloud Native Compute Foundation is more than that. Is I like like ContainerD project, Envoy Proxy, you know, Helm was started for Microsoft and now was donated for the foundation. Now it's public. Um, there's a few projects here that you probably are using in your daily base, you know, Prometheus, Open Policy Agent now, Jaeger for, for tracing. I'm pretty sure if you look here around Argo CD, 
you probably even didn't know that was part of CNCF. Those are you know, new projects now pretty much coming around the cloud native. And I hope that you and you follow this website and you see what's coming, the new projects. You can also look for you know the, the sandbox projects. And those are the main ones. And if you go on the CNCF um, you know, events and um, you're going to see a lot of talks. See, the last keep going here, two weeks ago, you can see 228 talks. And if you go here, you can, you can pretty much find anything. See, you can find a lot of talks here on that playlist. And I recommend you pick the, the, the projects that you are interested from here. Okay, from that graduated list, just pick the projects that you are interested to, to help and to participate, or even to understand more and watch some of those videos. Okay, that's the first thing. I'm going to, to, to play a video from, from one of the maintainers from Microsoft that says here, that I promised you know, on, on Twitter. Okay, um, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Cecil Robert Michel and I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, I work in the Kubernetes upstream team, which does a lot of work with uh, various Kubernetes open source projects. And I'm just gonna give you a bit of uh, an intro on like some of the projects that I'm involved in. Um, so in Kubernetes, I'm involved mainly in uh, SIG cluster lifecycle. And I'm a maintainer for Cluster API, Cluster API Provider, Azure, and Image Builder. So uh, these projects are um, aiming to make the management of the lifecycle of a Kubernetes project, uh, Kubernetes cluster simpler. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and show a few things. OK, so uh, when people want to start contributing to Kubernetes, a lot of people directly jump right into the Kubernetes repo. Um, and that's great, but it's a big repo. It's very complex and there are a lot of different contributors. So it, sometimes it's uh, a little bit harder to get onboarded and get started. Um, so my recommendation is if you're new to this environment is try to check out the community uh, repo. And that repo has a lot of super useful information about different SIGs. Uh, SIG is a special interest group in, within Kubernetes. And so they each have a different area of ownership. So there's one for docs, for network, uh, storage, et cetera. Um, so the one I'm specifically uh, involved in, uh, SIG cluster lifecycle has its own readme. And if you look into this readme, um, there's a lot of useful information about uh, the overall like SIG governance and leadership um, and then meetings. And what's really interesting is if you dig into the sub projects. Um, so SIG cluster lifecycle has a lot of sub projects. This isn't typical of all SIGs, but uh, if you look at uh, a sub project that you're interested in, you can find some good resources here. Like for example, cluster API, um, the Slack channel is here. And then you have the office hours, which is the weekly meeting. Um, with the uh, time and the meeting notes. Um, if you go on the meeting notes, you can uh, look at the recent meetings and maybe take a look at like the recent meetings and uh, what was discussed. And that gives you kind of an idea of where the project is at. And if you're interested, you can try uh, joining the next meeting. And um, also, uh, the Slack channel is usually really good for uh, like, Quick questions, if you're able to join Slack, the Kubernetes Slack, I highly recommend it. Uh, that's a good way to like uh, talk directly with the contributors and maintainers of the project you're working on and ask quick questions and get quick answers um, directly in real time. So um, then when you're looking at a project um, of a SIG, um, each project has you know, some of its own uh, processes, even though we try to have some common uh, uh, processes across all of Kubernetes. But typically, uh, you want to start by looking at the contributing doc. Each project should have a contributing document, which is basically that project's contributing guidelines. And that is like really, really useful information. So I highly recommend reading it. Um, 
and it gives you like you know how you start uh, finding a thing that needs help like how do you get started if you want to help uh, when you're ready to contribute a change how do you open the PR what's expected in a PR uh, how does a release work uh, how often does that project release things like that what's the proposal process if you want to contribute something that's a bit bigger that requires a proposal um, some of these projects that are smaller don't have as much of a process, um, but uh, the bigger ones tend to have something like that. Um, so something else is typically you want to look at issues if you want to contribute, and a good way to get started is look for good first issues. Um, so here I'm actually going to look at the good first issues in Cluster API Provider Azure, which is the Azure provider of Cluster API. Um, and that's because we have a bit more good first issues at the moment. But um, yeah, so these are uh, usually they should be issues that are well contained and have enough information for someone to get started without prior context. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're easy. Some of them will be easy as in it's one line change. Some of them will be a bit more involved. Uh, but usually if you pick up a good first issue, the understanding is that the maintainers or reviewers will help you um, in providing guidance as you need it. Um, but um, if you want to get started on good first issue, you'd usually want to comment, uh, comment a sign on the issue to let others know that you're working on it, just to make sure that you don't have several people working on the same issue. Um, and then, yeah, if we take a look at an example one that was already closed, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think this one was pretty simple. Um, this was just like, we have a, an old image in our test, we should use a newer image. Um, so this label as good first issue, someone commented assigned and uh, opened a PR. And the PR uh, references the issue that it's fixing. In this case, it doesn't have a release note because it's not a user facing change. Um, and then it was, uh, so typically if, you're, if it's your first uh, PR or if you're not a member of the org, you might need someone to comment okay to test in Kubernetes repos. And that means that it's okay to run the CI um, because by default, people who are new contributors won't get the CI triggered automatically. Um, and once that's done, the CI runs and then you get a review and once it's approved, it gets merged. That's the ideal path. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, what else? Um, if you get stuck, Cecil, and um, want to know exactly how to compile the project, how the things work, and how the project is organized, can you ping someone on Slack and ask help? And um, yeah, so uh, so if you get stuck at some point uh, and you don't know what to do next, I think the best way to get unblocked is to go on Slack and ask directly in the channel for that project or in the channel that's about that general topic or area. Um, I don't recommend pinging people directly just because that's, um, you know, people are in different time zones. There's like a lot of time zones and you might not get the fastest help. Whereas if you ask in the channel, anyone who's around can help you. Um, so that's the fastest way to get help generally. Um, you can always comment on the PR as well and say, you know, I need help and tag, you know, reviewers. Um, and that's also a good way to get help. Uh, the other thing I will add is as you're uh, onboarding and going through the new developer process of a project, uh, there's usually some docs, like for example, I mean, uh, there's usually some docs for developers. Uh, so this is the cluster API book, which is where all the documentation is held. And if you look in the developer guide, there's a bunch of information about testing, uh, like running unit tests, running end-to-end -end tests, and um, how to do uh, development with Tilt, things like that. As you're going through this, if you notice anything that's outdated or that blocked, uh, that you get blocked on that could have been clearer, or is missing some information, uh, please open a PR and fix it, or at least open an issue and say, you know, this link is broken or like this wasn't working. Because if you're running into it, it's very likely that someone else will run into it as well. I think that's it. That's what I have for for today. And um, 
please keep following us and see. I'm going to record some videos with Kader team, with the Cluster API team. And um, let's show you the main projects I'm going to be, you know, Cluster API, Cluster API for Azure, Helm. And I'm going to, to, to record, we can maybe even come back and bring someone here. I can bring someone on this meetup, but please follow what I'm doing. And if you want to get connected and you can't, for some reason, just ping me and I can try to find someone to help you. And that's the key the project was talking about. Okay. Um, I would, re I would recommend, you know, if you like Windows, just seek Windows as well. And if you are a Linux Go Lang developer, just go and go like serverless. I recommend Arcade. And if you like Kubernetes, go and follow these you now, these Kubernetes projects, Helm and Cluster API. Okay, and Container D maybe. Okay, the, the Kubernetes project itself is too big. You know, be hard to start helping directly on the Kubernetes project. It's possible uh, on the main project, I mean. But try to follow on those, you know, um, sub projects and try to see how image build is another one related with class API. But that's that's pretty much how I recommend you to get started.